Oh, not Alex Jones. I've come to the University of Sheffield. Hello, I'm Alex Jones, aren't I? To the University of Sheffield to meet Professor... Oh, a little bit of a sense of humour there. You always get one bigger than the other. Alan Pacey. That actually is really nice. Really nice? Dirty bastard. You're looking at spunk. He investigates what can have an impact on sperm quality, and he reckons that age is a crucial factor. You're joking! Age has something to do with fertility? No way! And he reckons that age is a crucial factor, which is a new one on me. Of course it's a new one on you. You're about as empty-headed as a hollowed-out eggshell. Age does affect male fertility. Oh, no shit, Sherlock. Fuck, you know. So men don't have the equivalent of a menopause. Right. But we know that men above the age of 40 mm are about half as fertile as men under the age of 25. Really? Really? Oh, for fudge sake, she winds me up so much. You could get a six-year-old to present better than her. Wouldn't want to, though. I'm just going to nod along like I have a clue what he's talking about, when really I'm thinking about how much I'd like to slam that baker. Or whether he produces lots of sperm or not so many sperm mm -hmm. are the size of his testicles. Right. And to illustrate the point, I've actually bought a, um, a set of testicle sizing. He brought some testicles he collected at home. Shit, quick, ring the police. I spot a mentalist. It's like a necklace. Beads. It is a little <laughs> bit like a necklace, isn't okay. it? Okay. Yes, a necklace or a memento. They're all buried in the front yard. Than if his testicles grow to this size. And that really is predetermined by his genes. Yeah. By his genes, good point. Don't wear tight jeans, they'll mess your bollocks up. Think what? about it in terms of car factories. How big factories. are they and how yeah. much can you get in them? Absolutely. It's like car factories. If you've got a bigger car factory, you'll make more cars per unit time than if you've got a small car factory. Never heard bollocks compared with a car factory before. But, you know, I suppose if you've got a duff engine, i.e. knackered bollocks, what you need is a fat bald bloke with a monkey wrench and a sadistic grin. That was sarcastic, of course. Where am I going with this video? Um... I found this video because I currently have one aching bollock and that's not a joke, I actually do, so can't prove it though, but that's what I was googling and that's how I came about that video, so you know, quiz me. Uh, but I'm allowed to say bollocks because that's a medical term, isn't it? Oh sorry, testicles doesn't have the same ring to it as bollocks, but it's true, I do have one slightly aching testes, that's why I googled that, uh, I wasn't just googling men's bollocks. Um, not uh, technically anyway. Anyway, I thought that I had accidentally twisted one of my testes in the middle of the night after having a rather aggressive scratching session, which I was semi-conscious throughout. But it turns out, if you do have a twisted bollock, you'd flipping know about it, because he'd be in agony. So, you know, it's just a bit achy. I did almost get a bollock twisted before. Um, I've never been so scared in my entire life. It happens occasionally when you're a bloke because you've got these little dangling things there you've got to be well careful of. I decided one night to jump into bed sideways, right? And I managed to clip one of my bollocks on the side of the bed which flipped it off to the side and it was poking out sideways. This is true. Now, when a bollock is twisted to the side you've got a very delicate decision to make. Now, you want to try and twist it back into its original position but what position is that? it's not immediately obvious which way you need to twist it. Do you twist it up or do you twist it down? If you twist it the wrong way, you're gonna be in agony and then A and E. So here I am standing in my bedroom at one o'clock in the morning with me bollock twisted out to a, a right angle. I feel me face, face flush red, slight panic on, sweating, and I'm thinking, I'm looking in the mirror at it, thinking, what the bloody hell do I do? So I go on Google, going, I've twisted a bollock sideways. What do I do about it? How do I twist it back? What way is the right way? And the last thing I want to do is ring an ambulance and say, hello, yeah, I've twisted one of my bollocks and I don't know what way to twist it back. Can you just pop round and show me which way to do it? What are they going to, how are they going to know? So I don't think they have a, um, I don't think they have a bollock twisting kit with them in their ambulance. I mean, it's, if you go to A&E with a twisted bollock, it's the equivalent of walking in with a bucket on your head. But I was prepared to do it if I didn't get it right. So after 10 minutes of trying to calm my breathing down and trying not to panic, I decided in the end the best course of action was to let nature take its course and to jump up and down like this 
and for it to gravity to, you know, do its thing. Fortunately, you'll be glad to hear it did go back into place. Um, well, I, I think it did anyway, unless you can be walking around with a bollock twisted round the wrong way, upside down and not know about it. But uh, I think you would know about it, to be honest. So thank Christ for that. But women, please just feel thankful that you don't have two very delicate marbles dangling precariously between your legs at all times that you have to be wary of. These bollocks are the only connection you have to a real normal life, i.e. kids, a legacy, a bloodline, and they dangle precariously between your legs like a couple of rubies in a silk drawstring bag. That's why we call them the crown jewels. It was like what I imagined back in the day it felt like walking around with all your gold or money before banks in a little velvet bag. The only protection, the only protection was a tightly pulled drawstring. So if you were a bit weedy, you just lose all your money to all the big buggers. Personally, right, I don't understand why it's not acceptable for men to walk around with some kind of protection down there, like some sort of permanent jock strap. Or if evolution could get involved, that would be really handy and, and build a nice little rib cage around them. That would be nice. Because being a man, you're given this kind of strength and power, you know, to go and go to war and raid villages, not these days, but back in the day. And, uh, but like Achilles, you've got this one major point on the body, one massive weak point, like a boss in a predictable video game, that if you strike it right, you can render us completely and utterly useless in a twitching puddle on the floor for the next 20 minutes. Collapsing to the floor faster than a 10 kilogram sack of Maris Pipers. Still an unmoving, twitching, and quietly moaning whilst clutching our crown jewels. Was there a point to this video, or was it just a load of old bollocks?